So let's get started. Uh, for those who just joined, uh, here's the link. Uh, I think Chun you can also can send in the chat again. And um, yeah, just just clone the repository uh, here, and then like uh, we'll be using uh, we'll be using this uh, data folder, the files in this data folder for our workshop. So just have that ready. Um, everything else here is like the slides. Yeah. Okay. So just a brief introduction. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we just a brief introduction. Um, we are part of me and Chuni are part of NUS Hackers, and this is part of a series of uh, events that we hold. Um, so there's Hacker School, Friday Hacks, Hack and Row, and Hacker Tools, which is the current series of events. Hacker School like focuses more on uh, I guess beginner topics. Um, so it's quite yeah beginner friendly. There will be a lot of guidance. So this usually happens on Saturday, uh, and you can join our Telegram channel to find out more. Then we have Friday Hacks, uh, which is where we have uh, technical talks, uh, talks about like hacking, building things on uh, Friday nights. That's where there also be like free food, like pizza and other things. Um, and then we have Hack and Roll, which is a hack and roll, which is a hackathon that we run every uh, every year. And this is around January. So you can also look up, look up for announcements uh, on our Telegram chat. And for hacker tools, we actually run through like uh, developer tooling, uh, scripting, like things you can use to automate workflow. Uh, so actually, it's uh, quite it mirrors quite closely um, like MIT's missing semester of CS. Yeah. So a bit about myself. Uh, I'm Noel, and like you can find me on GitHub at uh, GitHub.com/slash/noel. And so like uh, I'm a year four computer science undergraduate who loves hacking and building systems. I also enjoy like retro gaming, um, board games, and like learning about programming languages. Yeah. So you can find some projects on my GitHub that's like around like this, like think some logic programming and other small projects. Yeah. So um, now I, I, I will leave some time for everybody just make sure that you are all set up. Uh, so like make sure that you have a Unix like environment. So like I think many people might be using like Ubuntu or if you are like on OS X, if you're on Windows, then it's WSL. So just get your terminal ready. And the other thing that I will need help with is uh, for you all to clone uh, the repository and just have the data folder ready. So just CD to this directory later on. Uh, that's where we'll be um, operating from. Yeah. So yeah, okay, I'll give a few minutes for everybody to set up. And like in case anybody has like some setting up difficulties. Truly just send the link in the chat so you can use that and see the GitHub repository. Yeah. Uh, along the way, if like you realize that you have some difficulty right executing commands, just, just let us know in the chat. Then we'll slow down the workshop also if, if needed. Those here, do you have any issues setting up? All good? Yeah, I think I will switch back to the screen with the link uh, in case there's some people who join late. Yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe until like uh, 40, 42. So maybe like three minutes more just for everybody to just set up. Yeah. So you should see something like this. Okay, so anybody still setting up? Just checking. You can leave like a thumbs up or like something in the chat if you are still busy. 
going once, going twice. Okay, I think I will. Oh, is streaming still setting up? Or is it thumbs up like okay? <laughs> uh, streaming, are you still are you still setting up? Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So let's continue. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so just a brief introduction. Like, what what are we gonna go over this workshop, right? So we are gonna go over command line data wrangling. There's a lot of different kinds of data wrangling, right? Like, uh, maybe you are using like Python to wrangle some data, right? To script and wrangle some data. Uh, yeah, there's like various ways to do it. So for us, actually this time around, we are focusing on like text-based data wrangling. Uh, yeah. So uh, we will show you like how you can like adapt one, adapt, adapt a data from one format to another, like by, by building uh, pipelines, right? Yeah. So uh like these are the grounding principles like we want to in in unix right we want to write programs that do one thing and do it well and we also want to uh write programs that work together well right and uh finally we also want to write programs which can handle text streams because there's actually like a universal interface yeah so uh here's a brief demonstration so uh let's go into the data folder right and if you see there's a log file So you can open up, you can open this up in the editor just to take a look at it, right? So it's just a lot of lines of uh, logs. Um, yeah. So this is from like, uh, I think Julius VM. So yeah, you can just take a look at it. It's a, it's a, it's a Julius server, yeah. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do a small demo on like, you know, what you can do on a, a Unix-like system. So let's say we want to filter for uh all the log entries on march 21st right so we can actually do that uh by typing the following so cat log grab dash i so we can use this and if you type enter you will actually see that um there's a whole list of logs right where it's all prefixed with like march 21st at uh, 1 p.m. right so you should be able to see this on your site and previously if you just like do a cat log right so that's just the front part of the command right so if you just run this right you actually see like a whole bunch of logs where not everything is relevant like you would see that okay maybe it's like 1349 right whereas we are just looking for um logs at 1301 Right, so that was the earlier example. Right, so what's actually happening here? Um, yeah, so this is actually an example of like basic data wrangling, uh, where we are actually finding all system log entries. Um, okay, this is wrong. Uh, this typo, but uh, that that mentions um, this date here, right? And so like. Data wrangling is actually just knowing what kind of tools there are. So we'll cover a few tools during this workshop and like just to know how to combine them to achieve like various functionality. Yeah. So, okay, let's start from the beginning, right? Like what uh, do you need for like data wrangling? So you need a data source. So the data source that we have here is actually the log file, right? Uh, but I mean, it could be other things like just a text folder, but I think very commonly it's just like log files that you are using. Um, maybe source code as well. You might grab through source code to find like um, certain patterns, certain usages of various like functions or whatever. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's why we use the log example. Okay. So let's break down the earlier command. So the earlier command, let me just leave it here for reference. Um, there's a few parts, right? So the first part here is shown before this like pipe symbol. So it's the cat log. Okay, it's the cat log. So that's actually like um, showing uh, the log file, right? It's like printing the log file, which is basically like uh, attached to your terminal. So you would be able to see it. And uh, like as, as earlier mentioned, right? Like this prints up too much things, right? So we actually want it to be more specific. So that's where we add a filter on top of it using grep, right? Where we 
mention like this text string here that it should match this text string, right? If not, we don't uh, print it. And the dash i here is actually uh, to show like, let me just show you guys. So whenever you like there's something that you are not certain about, right? You can always type man grab. So dash i here is actually for like case insensitive um, matching. So if you just search for it, you should be able to find it as well. Yeah. So uh, I think I would, it is helpful to mention earlier because like um, a lot of the tools we use have like a lot of different options. So you might like forget the options along the way and you can just like type man and then the command and then like search for the flag uh, in order to find out what that flag does. Yeah. All right, so let's continue on. Um, we also maybe want to perhaps see like uh, who has connected uh, via SSH to our server. So a simple way to do that would be grab SSHD. So you can see, right, that these are all messages from like the SSH uh, daemon, right? So you can see these are all like SSH, attempted SSH like, connections to the server, right? And please let me know if anyone is unable to follow along. Um, yeah. So far, everybody seems okay. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Anybody has any issues following along here? All good. Can we produce the commands? Okay, nice. Um, and yeah, so uh, you would be able to like filter for the SSH statement, but there's uh, SSH page statement logs, but there's a lot of logs to go through, right? So let's like filter it down to like uh, uh, less noisy stuff, right? Like, for example, you don't want to see all of this stuff here. Like, yeah, it's not really very useful to you mostly right so okay for example let's see like um we want to see where like someone tried to uh, ssh the our server and then we accepted like the public key for them right uh yeah so to do that uh you can just like use this oh wait i shall use the front part of this first okay So you can see like here we see we show all of the um uh all of the clients that we accepted like public key for. Right. So you can see a whole list here. Yeah. yeah, so okay. And still there's a lot of noise here. So let's see, like maybe we can trim out some of the extra text like as, as earlier mentioned, right? So Let's explore using set. So let me just demonstrate first. Okay. So if you, oh yeah, the if you if you want to like just copy and paste the commands instead of typing it out, there's a commands.md file. So they have uploaded. It should be in the data folder too. Like commands.md. So you can just like copy and paste the commands to try them out. Yeah. Okay. So continuing on. So like you can see here that. Uh, what what we did was like using set. Uh, so a bit about like set, right? So set is actually a stream editor that builds on top of the old add editor. Uh, so you would give like short commands to modify the file. Um, or I guess uh whatever's coming in from standard in, and uh you should be uh, familiar with some of the commands like uh like in in terms of like the regex if you use like beam regex as well. Um. So, uh, yeah, so here, what is what this is, is we are using the substitution command. So this is actually like the most, uh, I guess, commonly used command for set, uh, where we want to substitute some pattern, this is the pattern, uh, for some like um, replacement, right? Yeah, so you can see that what we do here is that, okay, uh, this is the front part that we did, right? Like we filter for all of the like uh, lines in the logs that match for that match this text, right? And then after that, we process it where, where we match on this. We say, okay, whatever matches, like um, okay, let me break it down here, right? So whatever matches uh, any character, right? So we just match any character before this, followed by the uh, text string 
accepted public key four, uh, we replace it with nothing, right? So this is actually the replacement, right? But here we leave it blank, which is basically like just deleting the entire chunk of text, right? Okay, yeah, so you can see that it has cleaned up a lot um, compared to what we previously outputted. So if you see like previously we had this whole chunk like before it, right? So we essentially like removed all of this, right? So dot star matches against all of this, right? Where it says you match any character. And then the accepted public key for part matches this part, right? And then we replace it with nothing, which is basically deleting it. And that's that's why we return like the later part, right? Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, so the syntax, uh, as, as mentioned, is like uh, s slash regex. So the regular expression that we want to use, um, that we want to match on, sorry. And then followed by uh, what we want to substitute it with. Yeah. So, I mean, you can always like, blah, you can always like do this, right? Yeah, you can see like you prefix everything with blah now. Yeah. So, yeah. So notice that the rest of the text is not matched on. That's why it's still there. It's not like deleted away. We didn't match on it. We only matched like on the first part. Okay, so like just a brief introduction to like regex um, for those who are new to it. So it's actually like a way you can match text against patterns. Uh, so you can see here like this is a pattern, right? Dot is a pattern, star is a pattern. Like dot basically says any character. Star here is like any, num like any number of it, as much as you can, zero or more, right? And it's quite useful. Uh, it's quite commonly used. And so like it might be worthwhile to take some time to understand how they're used. And usually they'll be like surrounded by this thing here to like delimit where they start and end. Yeah. And like most characters, like would like for example, alphanumeric characters, right, would have their like normal meaning, but some characters like dot star have like special matching behavior. And like uh there's many different implementations of regex or definitions of regex. So like uh it might be like a bit frustrating, but yeah. Um overall, I think like the common tools should use like uh, pretty standard uh, regex. Yeah. So uh, these are the few forms of regex that are commonly used. So dot, as mentioned, would be like matching any character as a new line. Uh, can you send the link in the chat again? Yeah. So dot would match um, any character as a new line. Star would match uh, zero or more of the preceding match. So preceding match any character, basically match any string of characters, right? Uh, 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 the ternary operator here would match like one or more of the preceding match. Um, and then like this basically says, uh, sample any one of these characters, match any one of these characters. And then this is like a disjunction and so on. So you can just read through and, and see what this does. So uh, I think to note, I think to mention here is like, if you want to get an intuition, I think the best way is always to just practice. So you can use like regex one to just like practice on your own time, um, like the various uh, regex expressions you can have. Yep. Okay, so continuing on. So note that like uh, if you use like the default set, uh, it's actually using an obsolete, um, it's actually using an obsolete regex like format. I think it's like their own custom one. So yeah, uh, you can avoid this by using dash E. Right, so if you just type man set, right, and you see dash e, right, you would see that you would use the uh, like extended uh uh extended regular regular expressions in the script in 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 set basically, right, and this is like for better portability, yeah, so you can use the regex expressions elsewhere, not just like within set, right, and yeah, so uh you can. Look just locally currently, but uh, for yeah, for this I don't have it locally, but you can just like Google it to, to take a look at. It. Yep. So okay, let's examine more closely like the regex string that we use, right? Which is this, right? It's between these uh, two parts here. Let me just copy it out so it's easy to see. So it's this part here, right? This is the regex string that we are actually using to limit it with the slashes. Okay, and so like. 
um, what does this mean, right? Uh, this means like, yeah, we are matching any, any string of factors followed by this uh, accepted public key form. So the question is, what if like we had some string that was like this, right? What would happen here, right? So, um, well, because like star and like class are greedy, right? Like they will actually match as much as they can, right? So later on, we'll have a demo to like show you what actually happens, right? So, okay. So if you look, if you, if you use this command here, right? So, so this basically takes a line of the log, right? And you notice that instead of a username here, right? So maybe this was like Julius previously, or like Tom or something, right? We have another, we have a username, like a separate public key for, right? So let's see what happens in this scenario, right? So you can see here, right, that no longer is there like uh, the user at, at this part here, right? So if, you, if we replaced it, um, Yeah, if you replaced it with the Julius username, you can see that now the regex um, doesn't consume it, the pattern doesn't consume it. Um, yeah, so we still have Julius being prefixed here, right? But here, because like we have an accepted public key for, um, yeah, that, I mean, that it just gets consumed, yeah. Okay, so uh, continuing on. You can also use like a regex debugger, like so that actually like it's quite helpful. Okay, let me just show everybody. Okay, so you can also use like a regex debugger to like get a step by step explanation on um what's happening on the various uh parts of it, right? Um, so oh, wait, this is a different regex expression, but okay, let let's let's run it first to see what comes out of it. So I know I don't want this. Yes, I want this. Yeah. So if you see this, right, it's actually just showing us a bunch of blank lines now. Like it doesn't even show us the public key for. And that's just because like what we've done here is that we've actually matched against the entire uh, line of log, right? So we've matched against the prefix part, but also like from, and then we've matched against the IP, the port, and as well as the trading strings, right? And then we delete everything. So you can use the debugger here to actually like, understand like that this happens too. Like if you see this like uh match uh start match any character before I set the public key for, followed by um this entire string here, right? Then we match um the IP. So that's just like uh any character from zero to nine, uh where it's like three three characters, right? And then, um, yeah, uh, then we match on the pod, and finally, like this string here, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I'll go over capture groups later, but yeah, this is basically what's like happening. Any questions? Can I see a chat? Some questions, oh, okay, it's just instructions. Okay, yeah, any, any questions so far? Any questions? Am I going too fast? Yeah, again, for those who just join, if any, um, you can use like uh, the command.md file to like follow along. But some of these might require a bit of typing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, yeah, as this was covered earlier, like you can also reference it in the slides later on, but like, yeah, um, this matches the whole string basically. So how, like how do we like print out the things that we want, right? So after we match, we match on everything, but there's certain information obviously we still want to print out, right? So like what is useful here? For example, maybe we want to see the IP, we want to see the port, we want to see the name, right? So these are still useful bits of information that we still want, right? So to do that, uh, we use something known as capture groups. Yep. So capture groups, actually you can see it being denoted uh, here. Okay, so it's a bit of noise going on. Let me just highlight the bits that are um, captured. So everything in parentheses, right? You can see are uh, actually capture groups. So this is capture group one, or I guess, yeah, capture group one. 
and then this is capture group two, right? And then this is the, is the last capture group here. So we capture three things: the the username, right? The uh the IP as well as the port. Yeah. So after that, like how like how do we print it out, right? Like now that we've already matched and said that we we capture this these groups, right? We actually can reference them by using this uh, substitution syntax. So if you type like backslash one, backslash two, backslash three, it actually matches on like the capture groups. So this is capture group one, so it matched by one. Um, this is capture group two, so it's matched by two and like so on. Okay. So if you type this out, or if you paste it in, you would see that, you know, that's where you actually match and then like uh, print out accepted public key for print out no this oh sorry this is just for the Julius one okay no sorry this is not the one we want we want this one yeah so we actually just print out um the names first so uh that's by denoted by backslash one and then now like, let's say if we want to print out like uh the ip as well right so they'll print out the ip too and then let's say we want to print out the uh, wait, sorry yeah, yeah we want to print out the pot as well and let's just make it pretty small. okay yeah so you can see that yeah, you can use that to like reformat the string okay yeah so any questions so far uh uh, if you just join, just uh, download as long as you can have the yeah. Okay. Any questions? Let's see the chat. Okay, no, no questions so far. Yep. Oh yeah, it's just by the positioning actually. So like this is the first one. All right, it's grouped by parentheses. Yeah, yeah. So whatever is so like by in order, right? Like this is one. This is two. And then this is three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll give a bit of time for people to just like try around. Oh, what's the what's the meaning of plus? What's the meaning of there's, there's no plus, right? Oh, it's one or more. Uh, it's like it's like star, but instead of like zero or more, it's one or more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give like maybe another minute for people to just like play around with this and just like try it out. Any other questions? If not, I think I can continue on. Or if anybody wants a bit more time to like just try it out. Okay, I think I will continue. Yeah, so uh yeah, as mentioned, like these are the capture groups and you can just like try different capture groups. Uh there's also like backslash zero, but that just like prints out the, the line um that we matched on. So yeah. Uh, so it's not really useful in this case. Yeah, but just just to know. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, just like some fun like trivia to to note about regex. Like you can probably come out with like quite quite complicated regex. So like here are some links like demonstrating like this kind of like complicated regex. So you can like match an email address. Um, yeah, but like whatever it is, like these are still uh the reg regex are still very handy. Like you can use it to do like one of things. Um, like just like one of scripts to like wrangle some data, uh, or just look up something in your logs. Yeah. So yeah, this sorry, these are the yeah, these are the examples of like funny things people do. So like you can use it to search for prime number, use it to match like a plus b equals c, match nested bracket, brackets and so on. But um, yeah, please do not like do this like in your actual work or like I mean just do it like for fun. Like yeah, <laughs> like just for curiosity if you wanna try it out. Um. Yeah.
Okay, so yeah, let's get back to it. Uh, so as 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 like shown here in like the in the in the commands dot before, right? We have a chain of let me just newline it so that's more readable. Um, yeah, you have a chain of uh, uh, a pipeline, right? That, that that you run your logs through um, to filter for certain expressions and like um, pretty print the the logs. Yeah. So actually, like something to note is that you know you don't even have to do grep. Uh, you don't even have to do grep for this, right? Uh, you can actually use like uh the uh the bank D. Right, so the estimation mark D, and then like that, uh, deletes like the lines which which match that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you can do that too. But I think uh, it may not really be advisable. Like uh, because this like makes it makes your set expression more complex, right? Like whereas here is like broken down into clear steps where you are filtering and and like doing various things. Yeah. So it might not really be advisable, but this is just to note, like in terms of like power set, what you can do. So if you want to know what set does, you can just like main set and like just see all of the different like flex and options you have. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at more advanced things we can do, right? So earlier we just do something dumb like basically filter and just like pretty print things, right? But actually there's more that you can do, right? So let's go to see like the next command. Uh, we add, uh, we append like sort and unique, right? So let's run it first and see what it does. So you can see here, right, that we actually have things like sorted in some order, and then uh, we have the number in which they, like number of times in which they occur, right? So if we early on we just like printed this out, okay, let's just do it without the appended. So you can see like this just dumps all of the names that try to SSH into our server, right? And then uh, what we're doing here is we are doing two things. First, we are sorting them, right? And then uh, unique with the dash C flag, right? Dash C flag actually counts, uh, sorry, it collapses like the consecutive lines that are the same into a single line, right? And it prefixes with a, with a, with a count. Okay, so uh, like, what about if we want to like find what is the most uh, common logins, right? So there's other flags you can use actually for sort. So uh, the next command here. Uh, okay, let's just show that again on screen. Okay, yeah. So what this does here is that uh, we pass in a dash n flag to sort. So what uh, it does is that it sorts in numeric order. Firstly, this was like lexical, uh, lexicographic order, right? Um, and then uh, K1 here, what this means is that we sort on the white space separated column. So like sort on this, right? Sort on this number here. We see a number of times they occur, right? And then uh, the comma N, right? What it means is that you want to sort until the end few. Uh, so we sort until where's dot comma comma one yeah comma one. So we sort until uh the first few right, and then if you leave it out, you sort until the end of time. But yeah. Okay, so now another exercise to try is like, what if you want to sort um the least common ones? Okay, whoops, it's on screen. I should not show it. <laughs> okay, okay, try you can try it out. Okay, don't look at the comments I'm being found. Please <laughs> just try it out on your own. Like play around. Okay, maybe I'll leave a few minutes for so you to just try. If you want to try different flags and stuff, you can always just look through sort. Like you type men sort and then you see dash and right. It will also like, tell you the behavior of it. If anybody has questions so far, I can also ask in the chat. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, so uh, we can continue on. So like uh, the uh, idea here is that we can actually use a uh, head. So previously we used tail, right? To see like the tail end of it. But we also can use head to like see the first few. Uh, sorry, to, to see the to see the least few common, yeah. So if you type that in and, type, and enter it, right? You will see like, yeah, the ones that offer the least root ras xxx yeah questions no questions okay questions questions all good questions yeah truly also <laughs> okay um yeah so okay what if now like we don't want to oh you want to see that yeah sure sick cases let me just print out sick first so you can see like six behavior so sick just basically prints out like one one to twenty, right? Yeah, and then like uh sick the num start and end, right? And then you can you can just like sort it, right? So you can see like this sorts uh numeric this sorts explorer. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So uh. Yeah, continuing on. Yeah, so what if like uh we want to just give usernames, but uh like instead of printing out this whole list of usernames, right? Uh we want to just like put them into one line, right? Is there a way we can do that? Well, we can actually do this, uh we can also append like op and uh paste. Yeah, so let me just uh show it step by step. So op here is just to print it, right? Uh, to print the second uh column, right? So okay, let me show you with the op again, just to recap. So it is, there's two columns here, right? One, and then the second, and then and then the, the name, the number of times, and then the name. So what opcare is doing is that it's printing like the second one. I'll, I'll explain op a bit more later, but yeah. So now I think this is quite readable. Um, yeah. And then uh. Yeah, it basically just prints the name and then we keep pipe it into paste. So what's happening here? So um, for paste, right? Paste is actually simpler than all. Uh, so I'll explain paste first. So uh, it actually lets you combine lines, right? Uh, like you pass in the dash stack by like uh, giving a, you, and you also have to give in, you also can give in a single character delimiter with dash D. So in the case here, we actually pass in uh, the delim delimiter comma and then this is just to indicate like that we are taking it in from standard in you can also just remove it actually yeah so like uh if you don't pass in any uh what do you call it files by default like it would just read from standard in um yeah okay yeah so um yeah there's other things you can try as well i think using tr yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be going through the TR command later. So yeah, that's our, but you can try this out on your own. Okay, so all about OP, right? This is briefly used here. So just a brief introduction about OP. So it's actually a programming language that's meant like to process text streams, right? And it's quite good at it. And so like there's quite a lot of things to learn for OP, but here we'll just cover the basics. Um, yeah. So the aux syntax is like quite, uh, it can be quite like uh, basic, like, uh, so it's just like aux followed by the pattern and then the block, right? So this pattern here is optional. Um, like, yeah, if, if you leave it out, you just like run it against the line, right? Uh, and so like what aux does is that uh, it takes in like the, yeah, it takes the pattern and then like uh, this block here, it tells you what to do. So in that case, we just like, for each line, what do we do? We just print the second column, right? So that's what this is saying. And now that, because we didn't provide any pattern, right? So it's def it, it defaults to like, we're just matching all the lines. And then the next thing to cover is that uh, inside here, what's this like dollar two, right? It's actually saying that uh, we are matching the uh, second few of the line, right? Uh, so it starts from, it's one index, and zero is actually, oh yeah, zero is actually set to the entire line's content. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, this was mentioned. Oh, paste um like okay from the input to just stand out. So, so in this case, if you notice, right, that we actually piped, it, piped this whole chunk before, right? This whole chunk here is actually like our source, right? That we are, this entire source of data is what we are passing in. So that's the input to paste. And then the output is just to stand it out. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see this is just stand out on stand out, right? Okay, continuing on. Yeah, so, okay, let's say now we want to do like other things, right? Let's say we want to show like, okay, let's say we want to uh, compute like the number of single names, sing, single use usernames that start with R and end with T. So let me just like break it down a bit, all right? So here what we're saying is that, uh, let's get uh, the user, let's get, let's get, um, this is the pattern part, right? So yeah. This let's let's match like uh the first the first column inside our line, it should be one, right? Because that is a single use, right? So just to recap a bit in case that you guys are lost. Uh where's that? Uh, so remember that we have a prefix. Yeah, so that's the number of times that it occurs, right? So uh this basically says, okay, right, the first column, which is this, right, has to be one to say that it's occurring like sing, uh, one time. And then after that, uh, the other thing we, we, that we want to ensure is that, you know, the username matches this pattern here. It matches this uh, regex. So the username, which is dollar two, right? Matches this regex here. So this, uh, this is called a carrot, right? Uh, should uh, basically says that the start of, um, the start of that word, uh, or that string that we are matching on should start with R, right? Followed by um, anything that's not a white space, right? This is inside this context here, this is like basically saying not. Uh, yeah, later on, if you want to look it up, you can always do uh, man regex and then like search for. Up. Oh, sorry, I think I need to escape it. Slash, yeah, I think, yeah, okay, yeah. No, not this. Okay. Maybe I'll do the main page here. Okay, but it should be in one of them. Is it men seven? Do you all remember men seven? Men seven. Okay, no. <laughs> Is it men seven? I think it's men seven. Let me check. Yes, okay, men seven. Yeah. So the uh, men seven for regex. Uh where's that? Um if the list yeah yeah okay so that's mentioned here right so if the list begins with uh the the the, the carrot right uh it will match any single character so in this case here is the white space right uh but sorry it match any single character not in the list so so the list just contains a white space so anything that's not a white space yeah so this part might be a bit confusing because like in different contexts, like you see outside here, the carrot means like start of the line, but inside here it means like not. So yeah, just just to point it out uh, in case anybody is confused. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue on. Um, nobody's confused, right? Any questions? 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 Questions in chat? No questions. Okay. All right. Awesome. So okay, let's let's continue on. So what we did here is that okay, okay, let's again let's again show what's like without and with right. So here we just print out like basically the number of times that everybody occurs, and then as earlier mentioned, we use awk and we use like the pretty printing facilities from uh we, we use like uh the pattern to match um uh, all of the cases where usernames occur once uh are used once sorry, and then we print out um the names. So there you go. Okay, so 
Um, and yeah, so this is basically why we explained. And let's say we want to get the number of names, right? We can actually then, okay, this is, wait, this is jumping the gun a bit. Okay, so let's, let's append wc dash l. Yeah. So what this does is basically just count the lines, right? This is, is like a simple command to just count lines. Yeah. So it basically just counts the lines. Okay. Uh, there are two usernames which are used once and uh, start with R and with T. Yeah. So yeah, it will just basically just count the number of lines and then we get our answer there. Okay. And now let's continue on to see like, maybe there's other ways that we can achieve this. So actually, oh, um, Okay, so actually all is like a programming language and uh, you can just avoid it like using WC uh, if you wanted. Uh, and you can actually directly express it uh, inside awk, right? So you can see here, this is the example that, you know, you, you express it directly in awk, but um, again, just a caveat, like this might not really be advisable. Uh, I mean, especially since you have something so simple, right? Like you can just type it into WC-L. Here you have to type a lot more like, um, and it makes like the awk segment of it a lot harder to reason about. So yeah, not really advisable, but this is just demonstration again. Um, so yeah, uh, you can just avoid using uh, WC-L and you can use uh, the begin and end to like uh, uh, to achieve this functionality, yeah. So what is happening here is that begin is a pattern that matches the start of the input and end matches the end. And then uh, what we do here is that, because we want to count the number of rows, right? We initialize a variable here that like is, uh, starts at zero. And then at each, at each uh, line, what we do is that uh, we just increment like the, the, the count, right? And then finally, we just print it out. Yeah, questions? Yeah. Questions, yes, questions. Uh, can, we, can we tuck it in a script instead of like putting it in like a one-liner thing like that? The off oh, like you want me to put this copy and paste into a script and like push it or something? Yeah, yeah. Can I get can I make like a like a like a off script dot txt then chuck in like the whole begin to end thing in like three lines instead of one and then pass it into off? Yes, I think, like, yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't think you you just put in a bash script. Yeah. I think you just throw in a bash script. Yeah. But yeah. You can you can you can all oh, say a script file so you can like something dot off or something. I rarely use it as that, but yeah, like for example, like abc.org, right? Like, like this. So question question from the audience was um whether we could use like instead of instead of typing this in line here because it's very messy, right? Like whether we could just like type this part in, inside a script. Yes, I think you can. I think there's like you can you can like define a abc.org file, right? Or something like that. You can also just throw inside a bash script. Um, but yeah. Answer. Okay, great. Okay, continue on. Yep, so actually it's just something to mention, like, you know, uh, you can just carry off grab and set, like, first, you know, all does pattern matching, all does pretty printing. So you can actually just do everything to all, but like, you might not want to do so. Um, especially if like, your all is going to be harder to reason about than uh, typing everything through a series of things. Yeah. Because like, when you, you look past, right? You would be like, okay, set is used, grab is used. It's quite clear on what's happening. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So something fun is that, you know, we can also do math, right? So um, earlier on, we used this paste command, right? So call that. Oh, wait, that's, oops, spoilers. Okay, yeah. So earlier on, we used this all command. We can just print. Let's just print. Uh, how do I do a space? Yeah, I forgot. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we can just like print uh print everything, right? Then we can also just like print the counts, right? And let's say we have like some arithmetic expression um that we want to evaluate. So here, what we use is we use paste instead of comma, right? Earlier, remember that we use comma. Right? We can also just use plus, right? And that gives us an arithmetic expression like that just sums up uh, everything, right? Of, of the numbers, of the counts of the usernames. 
And then what we can do is pipe it into uh, BC, right? So let's just show you. So uh, BC is like uh, a calculator. Uh, you can use it on a command line. You can just like, you can launch it in an interactive way or so, one plus. Yeah. So yeah, but you can also like type into it. Uh, in this case here. So like what it does is then to evaluate the entire like arithmetic expression that we had here. Yep. Yep. Okay. So questions, questions, questions. Yeah. yeah. What's the last dash at pace? Okay. So question from the audience. Uh, what is the last dash at pace? So this is actually like to show that it's reading from standard in. So if you actually type man pace, right? You will see that um where's that yeah this line here right with no file with no file argument or when the file argument is a dash oh yeah read from standard input okay. yeah so you can leave it out or you can keep it inside if you want to be explicit you just leave it there to show that it's reading from standard in um but yeah you can also leave it out okay yeah. All right, any other questions? Nope. Okay. Yeah, question. So, okay, question from the audience. What does man do? So, man is actually to see a manual page. So, it's just like, uh, it's like help. So, uh, but, but what it does is that actually is, uh, it shows you like the full documentation of everything that you can do. And it might provide you some examples or like in a clear explanation on what each option does about certain command in long form. Yeah. Okay, no other questions from chat, no questions. Okay, continue on. So uh, the next thing that we would like to try is, okay, let's figure out what does XR do. So maybe I'll leave it, this is quite simple. So we, okay, we should hide it a bit. So let's, uh, this was covered actually in the previous workshop. So like maybe some of you already know, but the rest uh, can also just try it out. So yeah, just try to see what XR does. Um, yeah, this is a simple way to, to figure out what it does. Okay, leave a few minutes, maybe until like uh, 7.30. Let's try it out. Sorry, set things. Yeah, 7.30 is fine, one minute. Seems like all good so far. You can also ask me questions like if you have questions on earlier segments, I mean, that's fine too. Yeah. Okay, see you, Jeremy. <laughs> yep, thanks for coming. Oh. Are you just Google for this? Oh, just a helpful tip, right? Uh, uh, for those uh, on Zoom or okay, I guess in person. So, like, if you want to search for some option, right? Uh, you can always just type slash dash the flag, right? So yeah, uh, you you should generally I will prefix it with a space because like you know, what if there's like a dash s in the middle of some sentence, right? It doesn't match the option. So dash s actually the space actually match like the leading spaces that prefix the option. So again, forward slash, space, dash, then followed by the option, short form. Um, yeah. Okay, let's continue on. Yep. So actually what it does is that, uh, I have a quick demo here. Yeah, okay, so. Okay, here. 
Right, so earlier on, where we printed out the, the counts, right? Let's see what happens now when we pass it in to XRX. So instead of like printing it out as like many, many lines, right? We should print it on one, one line. So what's happening here? Well, actually XRX in lines out of this, right? Takes all of these lines right here and passes them as like arguments, passes the lines as arguments into echo. So this is like the same as to go, right? So it takes all of these lines, passes, passes them as arguments. So each line you can see is an argument to echo. One is an argument to echo. Uh, the other one, yeah, there's three ones, right? Yeah. So one, one, one is an argument to echo and so on and so forth. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's excerpts. And uh, let's now look at the data folder. Yeah. So if you notice, there's like a TMP folder. So this has like a bunch of like temporary files, like, yeah. And let's like uh, say, let's say we want to just like uh, delete all of the files that match like this uh, regex here, all right? So let's give that a shot. What happens? Make sure you are in the temp folder, by the way. I don't want to delete like files in your local system. I don't think anybody will name their files like this, like, but. You know, just, just in case you did for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you are using like the temp folder. Yeah. And because like okay, if, if you if you clone it, right? Um if you clone it, you can you can like reset it by by doing this. And yeah. If you clone it as a wiki repository. Um yeah. So anyway, let's just try this. Okay. So you can see here that oh RM fails for everything. But why is that, right? So it's the fight space uh, splitting again, right? So it actually like treats this as individual file names and then like tries to remove them one by one instead of like matching the whole thing, right? And so actually what we can do here is we can do a quick hex. So as earlier mentioned, like uh, we have used, uh, we, we will cover TR. So yeah, TR is being used here. What we are doing here is to replace uh, the new lines. Okay, let me just show what's happening here. Actually. Should show the, the part before. Yep. So it's to replace like all of the new lines uh, with uh, now delimiter. Right. Yep. And then uh, what we do then is to delete everything. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's the last <laughs> part. Okay. No, no credit for me, by the way. This is Julius doing. <laughs> so you should be left with one form. Yep. Okay. And so, yeah, sorry. Uh, I cannot remove it. It, 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 so as, as 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 mentioned, like okay, you want to know what dash dash zero does. Dash zero can read. Yep. So you can just take a look at the main page. I think it's quite clear. So remember that we replaced it with the now with the now character, right? So that's what we are. Instead of using the white space to like separate them, or sorry, new lines to separate them, uh, yeah, new lines of white space. Sorry, uh, then we use uh the null character instead. So normally XRX uses like the white space. Does that answer the question? Okay, any questions, any follow-up questions? No? Yes, no? Yes, so question from the audience. In every situation that it is, I can just replace it as in. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I probably, I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah, in this case, maybe, you can try. I think so. So question was like, can you replace TR with uh, SED? So my answer is try it. <laughs> Oh, 
how far will that how the files are Okay. <laughs> uh, so if you want to try it out again, right? Because the files are deleted, right? Uh, use this command. Check out the temp folder. Um, right. So you can see everything is deleted. Now I just check it out. Right. So let's reset it. If you want to try other things, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so continuing on. Yeah, so these are just like uh, other exercises you can do um, like, uh, like on your own time. Like, yeah, so you can see like how is uh, set uh, slash right here slash association slash G. So there's like a G factor in state, right? And then what's, what's the difference with slash I? Um, and like, you know, should you do something like this? Like, I think it's quite tempting. Like, for example, let's say you want to do a mass refactoring, right? Is it okay to like do a search and replace uh, from a source file and write it back into the source file, right? Yeah, so this is actually a bad idea. Yeah, um, but you can go and look it out on your own time. Um, and then the other exercises would be like uh, to use like uh, your distros uh, dictionary, find some words. This is quite a fun like exercise. I think you use quite a bit of like, you can use different things to, to solve it. So yeah, these are just exercises you can try. And yeah, so that's actually the end of it. And uh, yeah, please help us to fill in some feedback. Like any feedback about the workshop um, will be appreciated. And this is outdated, you know this. <laughs> we'll update in the Telegram chat again, like we asked to when's our next workshop. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this is actually, for those in NUS, like this is actually our last workshop at the, uh, for the first half of the SEM. After recess week, we will continue again. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? I'll leave the Zoom running for a bit, like in case anybody tries things and have uh, some questions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They are changing command dot MV. I said to Okay, I don't think these are that important, right? Oh, these are just readability. Okay, don't need to update. But maybe if you are doing a lot of typing, right? Uh, take a look at the previous slides. If you've cloned the, the whole repository, right? Actually, take a look at uh, shell scripting. There's a whole bunch of like helpful things that you would use when you're like typing a lot. Where's all the where's all the shortcuts? Big shortcuts. Okay, yeah. So I think page 13 of the slide. You can do that shell scripting. There's a lot of commands that you can use uh for like like deleting words and whatever, because you'll be typing a lot. And editing a lot of stuff. Yeah, yep. these two slides. Yep. Questions from the audience? Any more questions? Uh, yeah. Okay, I can't help you later. 